Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, share, subscribe, like this video, make sure you put your prayer request in the bottom. Earlier today, we was talking about different events that was going on, and there was a lot of news coming out from every direction. Now, Iceland had major earthquakes, I think like the fourth one that they've had, but also by checking the earthquake uh, map, earthquakes are happening in very strange places. Now, the Bible tells us that that will happen in diverse places. So we're seeing that. We're also seeing some of the biggest solar flares coming off of the sun, majorly, okay? So we've got all this stuff. Now, Putin has been pretty tight-lipped while he was running for office again, okay? But since he got reelected, which we all knew he would, he's starting to change his tune a little bit. Now he's getting more bold telling the Russian people that he's ready for a direct conflict with NATO. Now, Ukraine spent the election day trying to send drones well into the Russian territory, and they caused quite a bit of havoc, but they did not do what they were supposed to do, and that was try to slow down the election. It don't matter what they would have done or the United States. Putin was always going to win. That's who's going to be in. Now, also, we have a civil war, basically, inside the Israeli government. The left versus the right, of course. Benjamin Netanyahu does not want a two-state solution. He does not want a Palestinian state right on his neighbor or right on his doorstep because we already saw what that caused on October the 7th. Now, Lisa Boyce brought this up and sent me a, a text message that it's seven months directly from that point to April the 8th when all this stuff happened. Now, we know the solar flare and the solar eclipse. All these things are signs. April 8th is very fascinating by just the towns that it covers, like Rapture and oh, so many more. Brother Aaron, at God a minute, has run you through that on a daily scale. Brother Aaron has done great research into it there at God a minute. So definitely, if you're not subscribed to Brother Aaron, make sure that you do so. Him and Dr. Barry Aw, make sure that they keep you updated on dates that they're looking at. Also, Sister Gigi's done quite a few great videos here in the last 24 hours. So people ask me, well, who's Gigi? That is Blue Heaven. She is in a description box. Gigi is one of the best calendar people out there by far. Gigi knows her stuff, and she loves God like no other. Let me tell you something. If you want to pray for have Gigi pray for you. You'll see a difference. She loves God like no other. Gigi is very rare. She's been doing this for a long time, longer than all of us, pretty much. Gigi never did understand why she got her message so much earlier than all of us. And I told her one night, the reason why you did, because you're a lot tougher than we are. God knew you could handle all the years. We couldn't. That's why he, we come on later in the game. She's just a tough Tough, tough, tough Christian woman. She loves God, and there's nothing you could do to, to change her with that. And that's why God gave her her message so much earlier than ours, because he knew she could handle it. So definitely take uh, <clears throat> check Gigi out there in Blue Heaven. Two of the first people that God led me to was her, Kim Fisher, and Lisa Boyce. Now, I was already subscribed to Lisa Boyce when she first started her channel in 2019. Lisa's one of the most incredible women I have ever met in my life. I love Lisa. She's like my family. Uh, I've never met anybody like her. She's just, when it comes to God, you got to be a tough cookie. And Lisa Boyce is a warrior. She's a tough cookie. She don't take no crap from nobody. She knows the Bible. She knows how to read it. And she does not waver. And that's what makes her so incredible. She's like me. She's very stubborn-headed when it comes to God. So she's definitely one of the most incredible people. And one of the first people that I ever saw in heaven when I had God showed me just a glimpse of heaven. She was the one he showed me. And I didn't even know it was heaven until Kim Fisher. When Kim Fisher told me when she saw heaven, I knew where I'd been. I knew where I, where I saw Lisa at. I didn't know that. You know, and see how incredible God is. He knew at that time when I finally figured out, he used Kim Fisher to, you know, get me to know where it was, that 
at that time, Lisa would need to hear that. And she was very, it really made her happy. But see, God knew that Lisa needed that at that time, and I would figure that out at that time. See, God's all about timing, people. Everything you do today, God's already had that lined out, okay? So everything that comes into our life, like these news stories and everything that we go through, we can see those things, and we know that God gave us that information. Now, it's hard. Let me tell you something. Our news has become very hard to get. We knew that was going to happen. C.J. Lovett also has to- figured out the same thing we do, is that very close to the end, before the rapture, even after the rapture, you're not going to find much stuff on Christians and this stuff. I do believe will be wiped from the Internet also. So, like I said, very soon, people like me, Lisa Boyce, Gigi, and Kim Fisher, and many others like Brother Aaron and so on and so on, Brother Tom there at Watchman River, are going to disappear. We're going to be gone. We're going to be in a better place. But this is, like I said, our timing is very limited here. Animals acting the way they are and the way our military is acting, something big is coming. Now, that's something big that we don't know, but they know. All we can do here on these channels is to let you know that these events are coming. Now, we're not trying to scare you. We're not telling you to go out and get 22 buckets of food that ain't going to do you no good. It's just not. Because the rapture is going to come out. People's like, well, yeah, we can leave those for the left behind. It's going to get them killed, probably. People don't seem to understand when the rapture happens, it's not going to be like it is today. It's just not. It's not going to be safe. It's not going to be safe anywhere. You're going to be on the run. And I mean on the run. I mean, you'll be able to defend your house for a while, but it's not going to be a long time before you're going to run out of bullets. That's why I said, you don't have to be here. The best way for you to not be here is trust Jesus and the blood of Jesus, and you can just be in the rapture, and you don't have to deal with the chaos. Because after World War III in America, there's not going to be no cops, no state troopers protecting your stash of food. You're going to have to be on the run. It's, not, it's going to be difficult. Now, I'm, I, I try to make sure that people understand this is not going to be an easy road in the tribulation because people make people believe they just go into their bunkers, they're going to be safe and ride it out seven years. The whole world during the ra- after the rapture is going to shift. Can you imagine a worldwide earthquake? There's nowhere to run. Half the United States is not built earthquake proof. When this shift happens, it's going to bring down a lot of homes and a lot of buildings. It's going to be chaos. I got a glimpse of it one time. I watched mountains collapse. People, this is not something you can prepare for. I'm sorry. I, I know people get aggravated me with that, with this, but I want people to understand that literally this is not going to be a cakewalk. There's a reason why the Bible says the tribulation period, only for the Jews for three and three and a half years, will have any kind of peace. That's just for them to sacrifice. But even after that, even during that, you got the two witnesses that are constantly putting plagues on them and everything else. It's it's not going to be easy. And then you have the great tribulation where the hell breaks out on earth like we've never seen. There's a reason why God warns people that it's the seven worst years in the whole world's history. Now, this world's had some really bad history. A lot. Now, imagine... Seven years worse than any time in this world's history. People, I don't think they can actually understand what that means sometimes. Because I hear people constantly, oh, I'll be fine. I'll stay in my house and I've got my guns. You don't have enough bullets, and you're not going to have enough bullets to protect you for seven years. And you got to remember, you can only go three days without water. During the tribulation period, One thing that's going to be very hard to find is water. It's not going to be running through your spigots like it is now. Them days will be over. You're not going to be able to just go out and drink out of a spring. God, that's all going to be gone. Now, let me tell you something, people. Dying of dehydration is a painful death. I know. I've studied it. And where I do nursing and everything else, it's, it's, it's not pleasant, okay? And the world, a lot of people will die from dehydration during the tribulation period. And just simple things like stubbing their toe and getting an infection. You're not going to be able to go to the family doctor and get you an antibiotic. Those days are going to be gone too. 
people will kill you for some anabolics. I tell you this not to scare you. I tell you this to let you know. See, Satan wants you to believe that this is not going to be that bad. He's lying to the world. He's got people telling people, you can prepare for this, and you cannot. It is going to be hell on earth. That's why I'm telling you, do not be left here. There's a reason why I do this. It's not because I want to scare you. It's because I love you, and I don't want you left here at all, okay? I'm not here to frighten anybody. I just don't want any brother or sister in any country to have to be left here during that period because I know Revelation, people, and it's a scary place here once we're gone. Now, like I talked to you about Ukraine with what they was trying to do. Now, this article came out, says multiple victims in fierce Ukraine strike in Donbass. you got to be patient with me. This laptop is a little aggravating sometimes. Let's see. It says residential health care facilities came under fire there in the Donetsk according to local officials. Now, Dunnus is another hot place. It's kind of like uh, around Zaporizhia and all them other places. This town is Makiva in Russia, the, in the Dunnus People's Republic. Came under intense shelling on Tuesday, according to the region's acting leader, Denis Pushlin. Ukraine forces reportedly targeted residential districts, damaging multiple homes, as well as schools and hospitals. At least one person was killed, several dozen Injured, including two young children, according to the data shared by Pujan. Late in the evening, the enemy carried out fierce strikes in residential areas and hospitals complex. Also, the number of victims was later revised to 41 as more people sought treatment for various injuries. The victims received medical care, even in several health care facilities that was damaged. It is a, unclear what type of munitions might have been used, but the blasts were felt by most residents of the area, he claimed. Let's see, I'm, I'm seeing pictures of it. It's pretty, pretty bad. The regional capital of DPR also came under fire on Tuesday, with at least two people reported killed, several injured in early afternoon, according to the mayor. Now, this and Crimea are two places that we're watching because of what's going on around the world. And we know that the rapture's been closed. And we know World War III is right on that doorstep. Now, God revealed to us many years ago that Ukraine was going to definitely be a launching point for World War III. And that's what we're seeing here now with everything that's going on. And I always tell you, you know, if you really want to know how close we are to the rapture, all you got to do is watch Israel. And Israel right now, like I said, Israel is literally the center of the universe, okay? When Jesus comes back, he's going to rule from Jerusalem. He's not going to rule from America, Rome, or any other place. Well, all the church will tell you God is done with the Jews. That's not what the Bible says. That's what Satan says. Anybody that tells you any differently is not working for God, okay? Anybody that hates the Jews is not working for God. Bottom line, there is no other way of looking at it. I'm not going to sit here and bullcrap you. Anybody that you hear that says they love God and they hate the Jews, run from them very quickly. The Jews are God's chosen people. We was grafted in. A lot of people around the world hate the Jews. They are one, of the, and there's a reason for that. That's because of Lucifer. He spreads. He knows God loves those people, and he wants the world to hate them. When people are marching for a Palestinian state, they're not for God, okay? God gave that land. Anybody that knows the word of God knows this, that God will not tolerate another country there. He even talks about the Palestinian people, about the Jews running them out of there. He wanted them run out. It's not their land. If you know any of the back history of how the Palestinians came to power, you got to go back and read into Abraham. That's how they came about, was through his wife, letting him go with another woman. And that's what brought them in. And that is not their land. It was not God. If they didn't have enough patience. And you'll see that many times with Christians. They run out of patience and they try to do things without God's permission. And that's what happened with Abraham and his wife. They got too ahead of themselves. 
okay? And now you've got this issue, which that's why God was trying to prevent it, but God knew what was going to happen. The scripture tells us God knew what kind of decision they was going to make. And God already, already had a backup plan for it, okay? But that's how the Palestinians come into being. He does not want Israel to share the land. That is theirs. It was given to Abraham for that reason. He did not promise it to the Palestinians or any other country. And God will not tolerate any nation that sticks their nose into Israel's business. And that includes the United States of America. God has had enough of America telling Israel what to do. Hence the April 8th solar eclipse that will go over the United States, which will create an X over it. God is not fooled around, people. We are at the end. Many is going to tell you this world is a billion years old and a bunch of garbage that scientists kind of just make up data to fit their narrative. They want you to believe you come from a monkey. We didn't come from a monkey. If we come from a monkey, we'd still be monkeys, okay? It's garbage. It's another lie. It's another deception. Just like aliens. Aliens are demons. Flat out, they're demons. They're not here to get Reese Pieces and call home. They're here to take your soul. The Nephilim was not destroyed. God destroyed their bodies, but their spirits lived on. They have spent a lifetime trying to find new bodies. Hence your greys, your Nordics, and your lizard people, what they call reptilians. They created new bodies for these things. These are all Nephilim. They're not anything else. They are not coming from planet Uranus or anything like that, okay? They're coming from dimensions. The world is in multiple dimensions. We can only see into three dimensions. That's why when we plump into heaven, it's a dimension. When we punch through after the, you know, after the rapture of the church. These beings coming in and out of dimensions, now God created dimension for the angels. We all know that in the beginning, a bunch of them fell started teaching man how to create war and everything else, and he started uh, messing around with women and creating these offshoots, which was, which was called the Nephilim. The Nephilim did not go away. They're here in multiple numbers, just like they was before. God said, just like in the days of Noah, it will return. Well, it is here, and they're everywhere. The thing is now, the only difference is they look just like us. They have uh, upgraded their look, as we want to say. They couldn't walk around as 15-foot giants anymore. They had to look just like us. There is places in America that are creating babies that are not grown by God. Okay, It's funny that America wants to kill all the babies, but they want to grow their own babies. Why is that? Because they're soulless. Any baby born in a lab is not created by God, and it can be a vessel for the Nephilim. You better understand what's truly happening, people. Do you think CV was by accident? It's a test. I knew then something was up. I just didn't know what it was. But it was a test to see what they could do and what they could get away with. And they got away with a lot. More than I, we could ever talk about here, what they got away with. They changed a lot of DNA. And that's a no-no. God destroyed the world before because of that. It wasn't just because people was out sinning and everything. The world was corrupt because man's DNA was tampered with. That is why God destroyed the earth the first time. It wasn't because everybody's out drinking, partying, and everything. It was DNA. That's why he wanted to destroy villages and the animals. Everything. everything had been contaminated by the genes. See, when God creates us, he created a, a distinct DNA signature. Your DNA is what makes you you. When Satan started messing around with DNA and trying to change everything, you get minotaurs and so on, so on. This has been going on since the beginning. Satan messing with DNA strands to create his own offshoot army, which he'll use in Armageddon. These creatures will be back on the earth during the tribulation. You'll see minotaurs and giants and Apollyon and everything else that you never thought was real, but you thought the Bible was just a fairy tale. Well, people be frightened. You think it's bad now? You ain't seen anything. It's going to get really bad. But the good news is there's a rapture. and We don't have to be here. 
That's why, like I said, I'm not trying to scare you. I just want to really put it into people's heads how bad it's going to get. Because I don't want you left here. Trust the gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Jesus died on the cross for our sins, past, present, future. He died and was buried and rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. Trust the blood of Jesus before it's too late. We know in the next couple of months things are going to get weirder and crazier. I didn't get to mention this in the first video, but I'll mention it now. God gave me another date then. I saw it very clearly, a date of 513. I sent it to Lisa Boyce. She said, she reminded me that May 14th is the anniversary of Israel and them coming back into the nation. So God has given me now three dates in May. He showed me the solar eclipse in April four times. So something big's coming. And now with the animals, the way they're acting, going to the hills like a tsunami's coming, how many people do dreams and vision that with our good friend Bob Barber have seen tsunamis? Quite a few. If you're not part of Bob Barber's uh, people there that is subscribed to him, make sure you go over to End Times, Dreams, and Visions. Be a part of that community along with the Uptime community. It's very important. They're good people, and they give you accurate news. Bob is... One of the best out there. He sees in the spirit. He understands what's going on, and he knows the true gospel. And Bob is one of the most important people in our our community. Without his dreams and visions, we'd all probably be lost because he literally, thank God, took the initiative to document all these dreams and visions because I even knew in the beginning that how important they would be. We can take those, and you take all the dreams and visions you got together, and when you start seeing a pattern of things, you know what's coming. Just like us with Ukraine. I would have never mentioned the Ukraine war if I didn't have so many confirmations on it. But God's given us so many that I'm not wavering on what's going to happen in the future. I'm just not. We know what's coming. That's why we're here to warn you so you don't be here, okay? Like I said, once again, I'm not trying to scare you. You should never be afraid because you have Jesus. I'm talking to those that are lost, that have not given themselves to the blood of Jesus and trusting in that blood of Jesus because they need to understand. And that's who we're talking to is the one that come across this channel so they'll know not to be left here because there's no waiting room. This war between Lucifer and God has been going on for a long time. And we're now in the final stages of it, where a winner will be crowned. And we all know that is the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of all Jews. Amen. Hallelujah. I love each and every one of you. If I don't see or hear from you again, I'll see you in heaven.